Tell us about the wines we are going to taste today. Yes, uh, we're going to start with our Prosecco, yeah. um, DOC Prosecco with our antipasti. And then uh, we're going to taste uh, Chardonnay uh, from the DOC appellation of Breganze in the area of Vicenza. So yeah. with these two wines, we stay on the northeast of Italy, mainly Veneto region. Uh, Prosecco is a big appellation, is interregional, there's two regions involved. Uh, while the Breganze DOC is uh, in Veneto itself, uh, near Vicenza. And then uh, we're going to, with the main course, we have a good uh, Barbera Marathon, let's yeah, say. Yeah, we're going to yeah. drink three different Barbera uh, two will be Barbera d'Asti and one will be Barbera uh, d'Alba. Uh, two different appellations for the same type of wine. So like you said, Barbera, we're going to have a Barbera marathon, or three wines of Barbera, yeah. all uh, not heavyweight or, or, or easy picking, right? What do you call them? Medium, medium body, medium let's body. say. So talking of Barbera, uh, 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 what's the history of Barbera? Uh, uh, has it been the, uh, you know, uh, show? case being uh, since early or just uh, come to landlord? Mm, let's say uh, this is very, very, quite interesting. First of all, it's the second most cultivated type variety of grape in Italy, okay. red grape, after Sangiovese. Okay. Sangiovese, how you make Chianti, Brunello and stuff. And the second most cultivated is Barbera. Okay. And uh, like Sangiovese, also Barbera uh, is very popular around the world. Okay. Uh, it's the most exported variety of grape for wine, uh, Italian uh, grape of wine. Big success in California, in Argentina mainly, and also in Australia, when the immigrants, Italian immigrants brought this type of uh, uh, grape. Uh, the story of Barbera. First of all, Barbera, uh, the best area for Barbera, uh, it's, a, it's the north of Italy. Uh, mainly northwest. Okay. In fact, uh, it's coming from Piedmont, Piedmont. our three Barbera DOC. And um, let's say till the 70s, mid 80s, uh, let's say Barbera was very well known and uh, one of the favorite uh, wines in that region. Um, what happened after that? Uh, what happened to Barbera? Uh, we had uh, this big scam in the 1986 yeah. in Italy, the methanol sc yeah. scam, that involved the whole territory of Italy, unfortunately, the whole panorama of Italian wine, but producer of Barbera, they got hit mainly. Everything started for Barbera, so it was a stain in the reputation of this So wine. it was some sort of adulteration? Uh, Absolutely, uh, it's intoxication. People die, uh, people less, okay. less than you. Not that big thing. Very seriously, okay. many many European countries stopped to import Italian wine. Okay. Germany closed. Okay. Uh, um, but that, was, that must be a passing phase. Then, uh, it was a setback, let's say. Then what we have, in the same time, at the end of the 80s, uh, beginning of 90s, we had the Barolo and Barbarisco yeah. craze. Yeah. So what happened? Some producers started to make Barolo as a premium uh, a premium wine, which is at the same area of Barbera, very close by. So everybody wanted Barolo. They saw that the most prestigious, the best wine of that area was uh, Barolo and Barbarisco. More price, uh, exactly, uh, and instead of Barbera. Now, Barbera wine is starting to get back. Okay. Because thanks to many producers, they stopped also to, do, to fix uh, uh, the focus, let's say, in, um, in the quantity, the set of uh, quality uh, of the wine and not only medium body is drinking wine, uh, fruity and with a lot of acidity, but passing uh, also the wine, the process, the process of the vinification, vinification using wood, using barrels. Using barrels you can age for longer than this type of wine and becomes more gentle, le less acidic and more round. Yeah. So uh, talking more about technical, like you were saying acidity and tannin, so uh, Barbera per se is considered to be low on tannins and higher on acid acidity, unlike unlike the Barolo and the Barbera Escos, which are high acidity and high uh, tannins. Absolutely so, high acidity, yeah, yes, and so, low tannins. So being low tannins, so uh, the oak part, so does, is it able to withstand the oak or uh, it is normally uh, fresh drinking and uh, you know, immediately if, released to the... Uh, market, yeah. It depends how you can want to make the, the Barbera. The... Barbera is quite versatile as a great to make a wine. So you can make a ice, uh, very easy drinking wine, medium light body, without the contribution of the oak. Without okay. the barrel. Otherwise you can make also more complex wine with more tannins because you know the interaction between the wine and the wood. The wood gives tannins to the wine. So you can make a more complex wine with more tannins and uh, it can be aged for years. So lastly, coming to these uh, prime areas where Barbera is made, uh, and like you said, Alba and Asti. So, Asti, uh, yes. So, uh, what is the subtle difference between uh, we are going to taste these wines today? Uh, how would you uh, 
find the subtle differences between. I believe they are co-located just 30 kilometers apart. Yeah, yeah, uh, very close by. So, but I am sure there must be some difference between, uh, uh, you know, There's some difference. Alba and Asti. Yes. Let's say what I found personally uh, between the Alba area and Asti area. Um, the Alba area they tend to do more uh, full medium slash full body barbera. Okay. Uh, it's more focused on this type with the old contribution. While in the area of Asti, the producer they this big wide panorama of different types of barbera from the super light, very light, to be drank very young, to the one with the big contribution of the barrel, with the, so it can be aged for a long time. One thing we don't have to forget also. Now we have a revival. Now many many people are more interested in Barbera because uh, last year the website, famous website on wine, uh, wine enthusiast. Yeah. According to them, Barbera was the uh, in the day ranking of 2018 the best wine in the world. Okay. It was a Nizza uh, DOCG. It's a new appellation, uh, a relatively new appellation for Barbera. Same area, very close. We are talking about difference of 60 kilometers among one and the other. Okay. So amongst the Asti and Alba, what, what's going to what's what's your favorite today? I think uh, the the Asti is more interesting because it gives you a range of different flavors, uh, more different flavors. You can get a very young acidic one or one with less acidity, more rounded, soft wines. There's more variety than uh, the Alba one. It's likely to go very well with the food which you have uh, kept today. Yes, yes. Yeah, the food oh. friendly wine. Yeah, of course, food and wine pairing is very important for us, for the Italians, you know, uh, we say, we have a saying in Italy that a meal without wine is called breakfast. So <laughs> we always accompany food with wine, but no, we don't start the day drinking wine. So, so we're looking forward to tasting the wines. Thank, Thank you so you much for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.